What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's reaction video is 7 ways British and American pubs are very different. Are you okay? Right, so this is the first time I've seen the title because I don't know. I don't usually know what videos we're reacting to. Yeah. And no joke of a lie, right? My mind just read that. Yeah. Seven ways British and American pubes are Yeah, I, I knew you were going to say that. And I was like... Yeah, Millie the Child. I was like, what? This is Why a are Lawrence. we doing that? <laughs> Shout out to Lawrence. It isn't pubes, it is pubs. Um, <laughs> awesome channel as well. And this is pretty weird because we'll let you on a little exclusive. As this is rendering this video and potentially going up, we're speaking to Lawrence now about potential collapse. Literally, we're speaking to him in 20 minutes. We might be in a video right now with him. Potentially, we're, we're literally spe um, we're speaking with him in 20 minutes, so quickly recording this one for tonight. So smash that like button for that, smash that subscribe button, let us know your video ideas you'd want us to do if we did a collab with Lance. Let us know in the comments below, and let's get straight into seven ways British and American pubs are very different. We love a pub, don't we? We do love a pub. I love a pub. <laughs> in the US, this varies by state, but there's not a single one in the union that mandates that pubs close as early as that. Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those memos pertains to pubs. Pubs, where would we be without them? A question that's been decisively answered in the hellscape that is 2020. In <laughs> fact, while we're on the subject of the pandemic, do keep in mind, Uncle Toby, that a lot of what you're about to hear in this video might temporarily not be true. That doesn't mean that it's not ordinarily true, it just means that pubs have had to make a lot of changes on either side of the pond. And the key word there is either. I think before I moved to the United States, I was under the assumption that America didn't have pubs, but specialised instead in bars. I would have been under that as well. If you thought of a pub, I honestly could not it think of... It very British. It does, and like, when we was in... I know New York's different, but when we were, and when you've seen stuff, you kind of think... Bars, yeah. Yeah. Like a sports bar, mm. something like pool table's always there. Yeah. And then all I think of with pub, I think a good old grimy British pub. Yeah. You walk in, having a pint, mm. and you get yeah. a Sunday dinner. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Bars. But America does have pubs. Sometimes they'll be the kind of pubs that are looking to mimic those always in Ireland. Always an Irish Ireland. pub. And those ones are easy to spot because they'll say something like Johnny's Irish pub. Or the elephant and castle in allusion to Britain's many castles and elephants but then america does have pubs in its own right usually called something along the lines of merv's tavern and since i'm now familiar with how pubs operate in both countries i thought this would be a great opportunity to talk about seven ways that british and american pubs are very different so go and order yourself a pint of fosters or miller light as we order in the first round the story of my drinking life goes should have seen this one coming i did did you say drink? Wait, what, what? When did you ask? I, in my head, I, I thought... No, I, I, we should have said, I know, I didn't ask. Normally we do say <laughs> what do we head, think is coming up. In my head, definitely, I thought that was one of them. Yeah, drinking age, obviously, we're 18. Um, in the US, 21, most places. Yep. It was a little bit like this. At the ages of 16 and 17, I could waltz up to the bar of any British pub and order myself an absinthe. That and that's him? not because 16 is the legal drinking <laughs> oh, age with food Britain. you can. It's because A, door security is usually with pretty lax, as in there is no door security. <laughs> and B, I've always looked four years older than I am. No, the legal drinking age in Britain is 18. So imagine my surprise on my 18th birthday when me and a few mates went to paint the town red, not literally, that's another story. And I got carded for the first time I in my need. entire life. And the problem was I didn't have any ID with me. Fast forward nine years, 27 years old, and I've moved to the United States of America. What's the first thing that happens as I enter a pub? I get carded. But then depending on the state, it is not unusual for people that are much older, sometimes 70 years older, to be carded at an American pub. Trust wow. me, saw this with my own eyes. It happened to Dick Van Dyke. Of course, by then I'd learned my lesson and I did indeed have some ID. Ironically, I get carded a lot less these days. One of the perks of being a YouTube sensation and 38 years old. <laughs> so nationally, the legal drinking age in the United States is 21, but that hasn't always been the case. In some states, it was even once like Britain, a pub could legally serve somebody who was 18 years or older. In 1969, while Neil and Buzz were landing on the moon, teenagers could legally land themselves a glass of blue moon, but only in the states of Louisiana and Neil Armstrong's home state of Ohio. Wow. And then something changed. By 1975, the number of 18 states had risen to 23. 
This was a domino effect following the recent change of the voting age from 21 to 18. The belief being that if somebody's old enough to vote, they're old enough to drink. The problem is, legislators didn't stop to think about what would happen if these two things happened at the same time. All right, guys, we have cut because mid-video uh, launch did message us. I know we said we were super excited to speak to him and all that. And uh, we've been chatting, haven't we? We have been Potential chatting. collab coming soon. We can confirm a few things as well, can't we? Lawrence is not drunk in his videos. Yeah, apparently. Or in general life. He said, he said to, because we told him we were in the middle of doing this video, and he said to clarify that he's not drunk in every video, yeah. and he wasn't drunk when we spoke to him, and that is yeah. correct. Uh, we can <laughs> clarify that he is hilarious. Oh, yeah, in person, <laughs> uh, well, it was obviously over chat, but he was just as hilarious. But wits there, just in conversation yeah, as well. and also being from Cleethorpes does not make him any less of a person. <laughs> There's something wrong with Cleef <laughs> Ops. I know, we did it. We spoke about I threw that in there in case bit. he looks at this bag. <laughs> yeah, if you do check his out, lot, there's nothing wrong with Cleef Ops. Smash that like button, guys, if you had enjoyed this video so far. Smash that subscribe button. Go check Lawrence out if you haven't seen him. Just wait to the end of this video and then go and check him out. An awesome, awesome guy. And uh, we have literally just done a little scan just to remind ourselves where we're at. We talked about, I think at the moment, we talked about the states, which... Mm -hmm. 18 drinking age yeah. back in the past and all that um, so let's see where it goes from there smash that button guys smash subscribe button and let's check out the rest of seven ways British and American pups are very different what we got by 1983 the numbers plummeted as states moved to increase their drinking age once more to 21 this was seen as a response to an increase in drunk driving incidents and the domino effect was complete in 1984 when President Ronald Reagan signed into law the National Minimum Drinking Age Act which outlawed the purchase of alcohol by individuals under the age of 21. In and 2020, to one or two yeah. parental loopholes notwithstanding, the legal drinking age remains 21 in all US states and territories except Puerto Rico and the US Virgin Islands. We're going to Puerto Rico. 18. We're 23. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pubs, what we may go to Puerto Rico well, one the day. The answer to that question could be different depending on which country you are in. I mean, sure, in both countries, one of the chief aims of pubs is to give customers a place to get pissed until the cows come home. <laughs> and if you've ever been drinking with me, that happens regularly. <laughs> but the main difference here lies in their purpose in the middle of the day. In Britain, if we go to the pub in the middle of the day, often this can take on a quiet but social tone. We just go to talk over a pint. In a way, it's like how Americans go and grab a coffee. Coffee? Why am I saying it like that? One country <laughs> emerges from this scenario, drunk on caffeine, the other drunk on the street. Apart True. from that, it's the same yeah. thing. If you go into the pub in the middle of the day in America, you can usually expect that to be coupled with a sporting event. And that doesn't mean you yourself get drunk and start playing polo. It means you enter a pub that's simultaneously showing about 28 different sports. In order to do that, said pub would need to have a sh** one of these. TV yeah, That's definitely. right. In I mean, the intro was quite a while ago. I think we did cover it, though. I think I did say sports ball in the intro. I think you did, I remember. It was about an hour and a half ago we did the intro. Uh, but I just get that from the American movies. Yeah. You see them all, all kind of gathered around the ball, looking up at one screen, watching the sporting yeah. event. And then I imagine you cut to a British pub, like a proper old school booze or something. There's some casual music playing, everyone just sat around with a pint. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, that is for me a big difference. In America, the term sports bar is almost redundant, though I'm finding firsthand the same is not true of the term sports bra. Don't ask, one <laughs> word, tequila. But the reason that the term Sounds like sports a good bar <laughs> ought to be redundant is that just about every pub and bar in America is worthy of that title. In other words, it's incredibly common to walk into an establishment and be surrounded by television sets. And these television sets don't typically show repeats of happy days, but of the Cubs losing, or at least when I'm around. In British pubs, you will occasionally find a TV, but the emphasis is not yeah, on sometimes. consuming yeah. television, but rather on consuming alcohol and the words of your friends. That sounded weird. Earlier oh, in the video, I, I joked board. that we ourselves don't play sports while down at the pub. But in either country, this isn't strictly true. Of course, in Britain, this depends on whether or not you class darts as a sport. Especially when you're at the pub, because you've got a drink in your hand, which I've just realised is also true of professional darts players. Either way, darts are an incredibly popular sport in British pubs. In American pubs, even though you will occasionally encounter the odd dartboard, sometimes very odd dartboard, they're just not as big a part of the pub-going experience. Experience. And when you think about the sentence, drunk people throwing sharp objects, that probably makes sense. I mean, I'm often reminded... To be fair, that is perfect because when we go to the UK, yeah. I mean, you came with me last time, yeah. didn't you? Meet my dad, 
get meet some of his friends sometimes some of my mates come so my uncle came my uncle came we just played darts a little bit of darts yeah. you came as well yeah. and it's good and I've, just for the record as well you know obviously i beat james at a lot of the games and things like that don't i yeah from the video could just comment oh. in the chat that um could you just put uncle Stephen millie beat you at pool that would really help me please okay so that was very random it was very random but that was very... the same time when i had to play darts i beat you Okay, all right, let's just... Let, everyone thinks I don't win. We'll, we'll put it this way. And I do win. From a video, Millie beat me. I'll be telling him the correct story after the video. I beat you <laughs> and I beat his uncle. So. It never happened. It did. <laughs> Stories of American tourists who enter a British pub, sit at a table and wait on a waiter to wait for them. Here's the That's truth. Oh, you yeah. could be That's waiting a long time because... Un- yeah, no, no, no uh, table service in the UK. Up. Definitely. Like the United States. British pubs tend not to employ table Unless service. Unless we're the spoons. And this can be mm. a problem, particularly when the pub is heaving. Heaving in the sense of crowd and not like, throwing up. Like that. You want to make sure you get a seat. <laughs> I understand going. that, right? So, so here's hold it. what you do. If you you're there in a group, that. one of you go up to the bar while the rest of you claim the seat. The one at the bar orders all of the drinks and then it's his or her responsibility to carry them to the table. James is Just good don't at use the term them double fisting. In America, <laughs> things are different. Even during the Super Bowl, which is not a national dish, you can fully expect to receive table service in most pubs throughout the land. Okay. Of course, this could be partially dictated by the tipping culture that exists in America. And fellow that Brits, that's not the same thing as fly tipping. <laughs> At the end of the day, we go to the pub to get absolutely rat arsed or t- beer selection. What are you going with? For me, yeah, I hate beer. Yeah, I know, but you, just your if alcohol, your alcohol drink, selection. My, my I should alcohol say. selection is a gin and lemonade or a vodka lemonade. Yeah, sometimes Coke, but not or, as often. Or a strawberry daiquiri. Oh, you like or strawberry daiquiri? Or a sex daiquiri. on the beach. There you go. It's getting longer, Ugh. but I'm it normally stop. is gin and lemonade or vodka lemonade. So if yeah, so if we go on spirits, I tend <laughs> to go gin and lemonade now. Yeah, I've grown up from vodka stepped up if we go cocktails i'll nine times out of ten go strawberry daiquiri unless they don't have strawberry daiquiri there and you then go. i'll go sex on the beach yeah i'll keep my short and sweet i'm a log i go for simple lagers got a little i'll do it quick for monetization got a little budweiser there because i just like my lagers not everyone likes them yeah. not a fan of ales personally to have a casual drink and so to some degree it's going to vary from country to country as to what is on tap There are some crossovers and I dare say some exceptions to what I'm about to say. But there are lots of differences in the beers that are served and this can vary from pub to pub or even region to region. Any pub, British or American, worth their salt will feature a comprehensive list of local beers. Naturally, these are going to be different between Britain and America, but also between regions within each of those countries. Yeah, but then you get down too. to the big names too. In Britain, you're far more likely to be ordering the Australian beer Foster's like than Foster's. you are Samuel Adams. If that's not your bag, there's always oh, Carlsberg, like Carlsberg or Carling. In America, <laughs> well, Carling. Budweiser or Miller Lite. And if you want one that unites the two countries, <laughs> Just you can go for the <laughs> Belgian beer, Stella Artois, yeah, too, which in That's Britain okay. is trashy and in the US it's It can classy. be seen like that. And then, of course, there's the pint <laughs> size itself. Let me go back in time and hand you over to Lawrence from a few months ago. Great Britain might be unfairly known for its warm beer, but at least you get more bang for your buck. Or should I say quid? You see, a British pint is larger than its American counterpart. To some, that might sound like something that I cooked up after, you know, four pints of Stella, especially since each country defines a pint as one-eighth of a gallon. Mm. But here's the catch. Gallons are different too. In the US, a gallon is equal to 3.79 litres. In Britain, it's equal to 4.55 litres. So one-eighth of a US gallon gives you a pint of 473 millilitres. So a good old British pint clocks in at 568. Wow, that's quite a big and this difference. is great yeah. news for American beer fans in Britain because it means that six American pints are equal to five British ones. You'll be slaughtered before the pub quiz starts. <laughs> Aside from the fact that you now have a particular song stuck in your head, you're probably asking the question, what's the difference between British and American closing times? You see, in Britain, right up until about 2005, it was mandated that pubs had to close at 11pm. 
On the one hand, you could get around this by starting your drinking session earlier, say at 7 o'clock in the morning. On the other, given the time difference, you couldn't stay around long enough to watch wrestling pay-per-views. But then in 2005, a law was passed that said that pubs could stay open 24 hours so long as they had a specific license. But by all accounts, it looks like most British pubs haven't applied for this license because they still shut at 11 p.m. Yeah, mm-hmm. a lot do. In the US, this varies. Clubs obviously go a lot longer. Clubs go to like 2. In June. Jersey about 2 a.m. I think like in the UK 3 a.m. ish. Yeah. Um, but but pubs most of the time 11 o'clock, isn't yeah. it? It's by state, but there's not a single one in the union that mandates that pubs close as early as that. In fact, 27 states in the union permit their pubs to stay open until 2 a.m. And it's usually at that time Good after pub. tequila that my voice really does sound like that. Now, there are some notable exceptions to this rule. Alaska and Hawaii are to drinking times what Puerto Rico and the US Virgin Islands are to the legal drinking age. In other words, they're so far away from the mainland, they can sort of get away with it. What can they get away with? Staying open until 4 and 5 a.m. all day. There are state and local exceptions to those rules, just in case you were thinking of moving to either of those states. That's closing time on this episode. Let me know in the comments below your... Oh, that was awesome. We enjoyed. Yeah, go That's and check Lawrence out because again like we said we, we, there will be a club coming so if you like Lawrence like us stay tuned on both our channels smash that like button and subscribe button on both channels as well mm-hmm. we'd seriously appreciate it awesome guy it feels weird because it's this reaction is kind of it, like kind of included it was trying to yeah. him as well but you guys haven't seen that so we're mm-hmm. beaming from that because he's such a sound yeah. guy but then we're also into a reaction yeah definitely enjoy that Definitely, oh, good video. Always good video. Always, good video. always good video. Smash that like button, guys. Smash that subscribe button. Let us know what you guys thought in the comments below. And we should have a fantastic day. And we'll see you, legends, in the next one. Peace.